Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your mm. boy, Stanley. All right, we coming in what we think is the final episode of Kings of Napa until it comes back. Um, season one, episode eight, Judas in the Black Owned Vineyard. Yeah, my. I'm going to save what I thought about this episode to the very end, <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and move forward with it. Coming off the tale of last week, we saw what Calvin's wife came over there to August's house, right? And pretty much he left with his wife because things are a little more complicated than we thought they were, right? So this week is all about I need to get August back. He's calling blowing up the spot and he eventually just came on over to the house and was like hey i let dana let me in i'm not gonna let you go i can't live without you you know i don't fell in love with you all over again moving forward we see rose is back our boo is back and she said listen hey i had to clear my mind i had to clear my head I had to go to new york i feel great now I came back here to get my man, and it looked like her man missed her too. Yeah. So everything should be all to the good, huh? Uh, Rose goes over there to visit Bridget, right? Is this why you're back? That's why I thought she was back. Me too. I said, are you back to work with Bridget, or are you back to get back with Bridget? But your conversation at the house wasn't leading us to believe you were coming back to be with Bridget. You were coming back to be with Dana. Right. All right. So Bridget immediately was like, you know what? Oh, you're back with Dana. Mm, I can tell. Well, Rose said, that is my husband. Uh -huh. I love him. A bit flawed. Got his things <laughs> about him. But at the end of the day, he's good to his core. Like, he's just been through a lot. And we're going to try to work this thing out. Well, okay. <laughs> so, like I said, things were supposed to be on the up and up. They're supposed to be all to the good, right? They sitting there getting matching haircuts. Just googling, eyeing each other. And the next thing we know, we saw Rose... Um, having a conversation with the fertility doctor. She was like, hey, I just got my period. Let's go ahead and start another round. We want to try for this baby. Oh, Nursey Boo was like, uh, about that. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've talked to your husband and um, we need some more sperm. Well, she went back to him and was like, hold on. I, I talked to the fertility doctor and she said she talked to you and now he looking dumb in the face. I'm going Like she wasn't going to find out. So she was like, so we've built our life on being honest with each other, right? Like we may have all the problems in the world, but honesty is not one of those things. You know, everything about me, what is it that you're holding back from me? This mother bucket though had a whole vasectomy two yep. years ago. Mm -hmm. So this is where Rose put her yeah. foot down. Yeah, she was she, done at that point. She should have been. Yeah, she was done. She said, wait a minute. So you don't allow me to put my body through this havoc, putting my emotions on a roller coaster that's going 150 miles per hour up and down these hills, all a while you can't even produce a baby because Mine. you it's don't have a second. <laughs> oh, at this point she was like, you know what? I am done. So Dana in pure Dana fashion was like, uh, uh, you know, in my daddy's will, it mm -hmm. said that if you're not with me, a you, king, you got no job. You don't got, she was like, like what I, don't, hell? I, don't, I don't give a sheet. That's what she said. I don't give a sheet. Fuck this job. Matter of fact, she should have said, fuck this family. Uh -huh. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> yeah. But at first, I thought that she was playing Dana. But she loved him for real, though. Yeah, she was crying. Yeah, she, she was, was crying like, her I tail loved off. you for real. But I wonder if he ever had that conversation with Rose. No, of course not. That he didn't want to have children. Why would he? We wouldn't be here if he did. Like, why he take her through that? Because he's nasty. He's mean. He's selfish. <laughs> so then he ended up lying to um, Rose at, um, at some point. Telling Rose that he realizes that she kissed Bridget. Because he came around to the house, house to drop some yeah. stuff off. <laughs> so you, you, you're not going to admit to the crime. Yeah. So then we have Calvin. Because you know Calvin is still representing Bridget and whatnot. So he gets Bridget to come over to the office. Code so that they can vet out everything that they know. Everything that they don't know. Let's collaborate some stories. Let's make sure that you're prepared to be on the stand. If it comes to that. Well after talking to Bridget. She Calvin already. said absolutely mm -hmm. not. You're too emotional. And they will fry you. <laughs> yeah. You cannot get on the stand. She's like, buck what you heard. I want to be on. So you want to go to jail. I but you know that happens on every show? Yes. That when somebody needs to be represented by a lawyer and they tell them don't get on the stand. No, you I'm don't gonna know. I'm going to do it. I'm getting on the stand. Well, why you hire me though? <laughs> yeah. 
So then over at the um, house, we hear August on the telephone. She's getting another call from the extortionist requesting another money drop. So you mean to tell me Bridget just got kind of out of hot water, in the hot water, but out of hot water? You and mean to, she, yeah, and still, you mean to tell me that she's still... I said she both. I said, nah, this ain't Bridget. I said she this both. This ain't Bridget. This ain't her. <laughs> this ain't her. So August ended up having a conversation with Calvin. Calvin was like, listen, I know this your sister and I know what it looks like, but I don't believe it's her. So she tells Calvin, listen, I got a call today. And he said, well, it's not her. She was here, here all evening. But uh, <laughs> she did step out and said that she yeah, needed to make a telephone call. I was like, dang it, there it is right there. So he said, whoop, like the infomercial said, whoop, there's more. <laughs> so he said, you know what, we about to get some people on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get some phone calls traced. And if that call that was made to you comes from over here, then we got something. If it didn't, then we got a way to get this off of Bridget, but now we have to figure out who this is. Come to find out that the call was made on the other side of town, yep. so it was no possible way that it was Bridget because she was in the building with Calvin at the time that the telephone call was made, right? And I was like, God darn it, who the heck is now? So, <laughs> yeah, so I'm over here like, what in the everlasting? So we're over at the hospital. Oh, Auntie Melody don't came on around, y'all. The, the Lord is good. Her and her sister are sitting there talking, and her sister Vanessa was like, listen, I said that if you came out of this, I would just drop everything. I would let everything go. I would love you the way that I used to love you back in the day. Basically, you know how it is with somebody yeah. on deathbed. I just can't understand why we can't do that. But Before? Before that. Why things got to get bad for us to make up? I don't and understand make things, And make things right. And Melody started having a conversation with Vanessa about Reggie. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So she said, you know what? Reggie really loved you. Like you were his soulmate. I was just a good friend. And he was so afraid that you would leave him again. Like you had fallen out of love. And Vanessa was the same way. It was like, you know what? Dead all that. Yeah. We don't even <laughs> have to have this conversation no more. More importantly, where is, we need to get Bridget up here. So she asked for her daughter. And we got Bridget up there to the hospital. But at first, she was concerned about the fact that Bridget knew that Reggie was her father a long, long time, time ago. Yeah. And the fact that someone so young was able to hold all of that in and not be able to talk to anybody, anybody. about yeah. it. She was like, that girl's probably going to hate me for forever. So we see an episode <clears throat> that um, Samara... Samara lets August know, like, listen... I was called hmm. to be a character witness for Bridget, and I'm going to do it. So, you know, um, August is like, wait a minute, wait a minute. So, you truly are going to go against me and our side of right, and we're the ones that's being extorted to be a character witness for my sister that we're trying to put behind bars? Samara was like, I don't know what happened to you. Like, it's now like the business over people. She was like, yeah. I'm looking at you and I don't even recognize you anymore. We see that later on in the episode, Christian was talking to old girl, his boo thing or whatnot. And I said, I don't trust that hoe. Yeah. I don't trust her at Fridge and All. I trusted her at her first until she came back. Yes. She came back very easy. Very strong. Very strong, excited. You my man. You doing big things. I want to meet your mom. Yeah, you about ready to be paid and all when she said something about investors, I said, mm-mm, mm-mm, nope, yeah. nope, nope. She about to take I, you for everything. Christian ended up having a meeting with her investors in this shabby looking <laughs> bar. <laughs> and he, they, you know, he's letting the guys taste his um, bourbon and whatnot. And they was like, you know what? We're oh, always on the side of money. So this is something that we yeah, can get we behind. In. We're in. Long story short, old girl was texting the investors in the middle of the night who happens to be her cousins. Yep. And said, oh, we got this sucker. Oh, yeah, we, we about, about to, to make get, some money. We about to be paid. Me. So they going from one extortionist <laughs> to, to another. another. <laughs> and this one is in the bed with you, honey. Yep. We still have this wine that we need to produce, right? Because Sean and Sean got this good wine. We don't really have nothing. They don't have Bridget at this point. So we have, uh, what's the latest name? Um, Grace. Grace. Grace is formulating something and it's good. And everybody likes it, but they're like, there's a twist that's missing. missing. Like, there's that that's missing to it. And they were like, let's put a touch of Christian's bourbon in the wine. I said, see, y'all about ready to buck people up. Yeah. All the way up. 
So they made that little concoction and whatnot. It turned out exactly the way that they needed but it. But why I wanted out. to taste it, I did want to taste I it. I said it was nice yeah. and crisp. Yeah, I to taste that, man. Nice crisp. It <laughs> won't nothing but apple juice in them glasses. So then they were like, you know what? We have our product. Now, on TV, can you get Jason back on the line? Get him back on the hook? Because we need a distributor for this. And she was like, I think I got a couple more bags, um, um, tricks in my bag. I can get him. Next thing we know, we see Jason and old girl over there. They're tasting the wine and they're blown away. So what they did was they put an offer on the table. They was like, listen, we want you to be the exclusive distributor of this wine. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to drop Sean and Sean. Hell yeah. And don't do nothing with them. They were like, that must have been some bomb. Uh -huh. They was like, deal. Deal. <laughs> I said, well, yeah, man. I right. said, that's what Sean and Sean get. Yeah, for trying to play dirty yeah. and be nasty with it. All right, so we see that Calvin was supposed to meet with August over at the restaurant that they always go to. What's the guy's name? I had to write it down because I never knew his name. I just knew him as the white guy that owned the restaurant. Right. Was it Gross Grossbeck or Grossbeck? And he's like, you know, you gonna have what you gonna have? So she was like, some drink. Yeah. And he was like, oh, so we're going hard tonight. She was like, yep, I've had a hard day. So then she gets a text from Calvin and was like, listen, I'm going to have to stand you up on this one. I'm not going to make it. I was like, I was like, hmm. this is sus. Like, Calvin? Like Next thing we know, we see August having her folder and she's going through all this. I said, you're doing a whole lot out in the public. Like, she has <clears throat> all of the evidence that the, that the PI had um, provided them with pictures of vehicles that had been coming in and out of the vineyard. Pictures that was around Bridges' house. So, August was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and go. And he was like, but you're not even going to have pie? Like, you always get a slice of my of the pie that my family makes. Like, you need to... I said, don't mm -hmm. you eat that goddamn pie? Mm -hmm. Something is up. Well, next thing we know, she goes outside. And lo and behold, that the car that was in Reggie's office in a picture is parked outside. Old boy comes out the back and was like, oh, you ready for your pie now? So she goes back in there. And of course, he started looking real demon. I mean, like real demonic. So she's, she um, calls Calvin and lets it be so that he can hear. So basically, old boy is mad because his family sold the land that the King's Vineyard is on to Reggie. And they feel like Reggie got over on them because Reggie was giving them the... the the slick talking guy to get a good deal on the land and they fell for it. And old boy said, y'all don't belong here. This is our land. This is what we supposed to do. And your, your, your um, daddy hustled my grandfather out of what was ours. And he wanted to call him a nip. Yeah, that's what he wanted. Yeah. He wanted to call him a because he was like, y'all don't bug <clears throat> y'all. She y said, y'all what? Like, y'all who people, what people? He said at the beginning of the pandemic, or was it in? Beginning. And Begin things at the beginning of the pandemic. Of the pandemic, he approached <laughs> Reggie and wanted to buy back a piece of the land. And Reggie laughed in his, his face. face. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I'm trying to figure out, did Reggie ever realize that he was the one extorting him out of money? Because why does he have his picture? Of yeah, his vehicle? That, that vehicle, yeah. So then we see <sighs> that old boy has a gun. And he's running August down was like, yeah, your dad, you've always been a daddy's girl. And what I want to do is hurt the thing that daddy loved the most. Basically, he wanted to kill her up in that restaurant. Mm -hmm. So she found a way to flip the table on him and they get the tussling. And then by this time, Calvin had rounded up the police officers and they came through and relieved her from it and whatnot. So now we know that Bridget was not the extortionist. But now we got another problem on our hands. Yeah, yeah, we got another, yeah. How do you get back what you destroyed by thinking that your whole sister, not your cousin now, was the whole extortionist? You're getting ready to put this girl away for 20 years. Dang. Over at the um, vineyard, so they're having this business meeting and whatnot, and we're trying to move forward. We're getting the production and all that stuff, getting dates on when this wine is going to be produced and all of this. Bridget showed up. So that's when she proposed to them, say, hey, I'll come back to work for y'all, but you're going to have to make me VP. Yep. And with a 20% increase. August ended up tell asking Bridget, like, how can we move forward with this? And she was like, in so many words, the bridge that you burn, I can't cross back over it. Yeah. So at this point, it's all business between us. And I'll see you at work. It's like, dag, dag, dag. So then we see Rose. She over there at Bridget's house. Bridget was like, so what you got up your sleeve and whatnot? She said, mm-mm, just like you. 
When my back was against the wall, I had no family. I was out there all by myself, hung out there to dry. And I know where all the skeletons are buried at. Mm -hmm. She said, we about to do something. And it's going to hurt and it's going to feel real good. I said, oh, no. John. So then at the end of the episode, we saw Bridget sitting there looking over the fields and the grapes, no, just August. like her father. August. Yeah, August. Looking over the grapes and stuff, just like her father. And that's how it went off. But before <laughs> it went off, where the cliffhanger is, is that this new black guy yeah. has come along and bought Sean and Sean. And he's planning on starting his own vineyard and building a resort. I said. And told, uh, All right, Salamander. And told Vanessa, I would love to taste your wine. And she was like, <laughs> I said, baby, Reggie uh, ain't been dead that long. Uh -huh. that, said that coochie over there got, got a heartbeat. Uh -huh. <laughs> said that coochie was like, Rawr. <laughs> <laughs> But y'all let us know what y'all thought about that episode. I thought that the season finale, it was a letdown for me. Yeah. I, I yeah. It was I such think, a build up. Yeah. It was, yeah. It could have been a little stronger. It would have been better if, if Bridget if, was If it was story. Bridget. I wish, yeah, I kind of wish it was Bridget. Although it was like, it was too clear to be her, but it still would have made us feel a little bit more connected to Yeah. The whole or, thing. or if it was that guy, but he was connected with somebody in the house. Or more connected to yeah. the storyline. Like, yeah. we literally probably saw him like two to three to three times when yeah. he went to the restaurant. And then he just comes out of boom, nowhere. Yeah, we would never get As that. the extortionist yeah. because he's butthurt because black yeah. people, the black people are doing your daddy, than him. Because your daddy is so regular. Granddaddy, man. yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And you butthurt. But y'all y'all let us know what y'all think. Was, was it lackluster for you or... Straight from the via. The dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla, Holla boom! boom.